Hello, welcome to the Polyglot Files. My name is Michael and today we're doing a video on a topic that I thought was pretty interesting. Before we get started though on today's video, I did want to say that we are approaching 10,000 subscribers here on this channel. That's amazing. I had no idea that close to 10,000, I think we're at like 9,000. I had no idea that 9,000 or 10,000 people would even care about this channel, um, but it's really awesome that you all do. I thought it would be pretty cool to celebrate the 10,000 subscriber milestone by doing a Q&A live stream. So if you have any questions that you'd like me to answer, feel free to leave them in the comments to this video below. I look forward to answering them um, as well as meeting you all on live stream. There'll be more details about that live stream soon, maybe. I don't know. I haven't planned it yet. Anyway, today's topic. I wanted to do a video focusing on the question, do I need to learn grammar as a language learner? I am really pale. Oh my god. I apologize. Oh. Yeah, I need to... I need to... I'm dressed in a, in a t-shirt, but actually it's freezing outside. Um, it, it's just not getting any warmer. Okay, where was I? So this video is going to be a little bit more of a ramble or a rant, and it's going to answer the question, do I need to study grammar when I study a language? Let's talk about the background of this topic. So there are two schools of thought when it comes to whether or not we need to learn grammar when we're studying a second language. The first school of thought says, absolutely. The first thing you should do when you want to learn a new language is to enroll in a course or grab a textbook, or find some sort of online tutorial, something or other, to help you get the basics of the grammar. And by grammar here, I mean like word order. So, for example, in English, we know that our subject goes first, and then our verb, and then our object. So we, we say things like, I buy apples subject, verb, object. Grammar also means verb conjugations. Grammar also talks about if you're in a language like German or Russian where there's cases, so your nouns are changing depending on what role they play in the sentence. So all of these things, plus 101 other things, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, conjunctions, all of those things contribute to grammar. And the school of thought that I'm talking about right now is the one that says you should learn all of these things before you attempt to read something, before you attempt to speak with a native speaker, before you attempt to watch or listen to something in that language. Um, so that's option number one. People who are, I would call them grammatical purists. They, they, or I don't even know. Grammatical extremists? Is this becoming one of those videos? No, okay. I would say that if you're in that school of thought, um, your focus is very much on learning a language's grammar. Now, the second school of thought is the school of thought that says that when you're learning a new language, you shouldn't really focus on grammar. This school of thought says that you don't actually need to explicitly learn grammar, so you don't necessarily need to get a textbook, you don't necessarily need to enroll in a course. Rather, grammar is absorbed through your exposure to natural language. So for example, if I wanted to amp up my Russian, Instead of slogging over Russian textbooks and courses, I should surround myself with the Russian language, whether it's through media or through books, and absorb the language naturally. So, grammar or no grammar? That is the question. There seems to be an extreme here between people who say you need to learn grammar and you can't do anything else until you learn the grammar, and then there's a school of thought that says, nope, don't worry about grammar, just get to the language. Where do I stand? Maybe it's the Canadian in me, but I'm kind of in the middle. So if you're somebody who says you need to learn all the grammar first before you start communicating, before you surround yourself with the language, um, I think that that's very unrealistic. Um, I think you need to acknowledge that grammar is a living, breathing thing. Language doesn't exist within the context of a textbook. It doesn't exist within the context of a course. Language is something that is utilized by people every single day. French is used by French people every single day. 
Russian is used by Russian speakers every single day. It's a dynamic living thing. It's not static. It's not unchanging. And frankly, I think if you're only going to learn a language by reading about it in a textbook or by memorizing verb endings and case endings and lists of vocabulary and prepositions, I think you're missing the real point of language learning, which is to be able to communicate with people. I also think that when you devote yourself to grammar instead of language, I'm making a distinction between the two, when you focus only on grammar and you don't expose yourself to real speakers, whether that's by speaking to somebody online, maybe having a conversation in person or accessing media, I think it's a very grueling language learning process. By that I mean I don't think it's very interesting to sit and memorize grammar rules and vocabulary tables all day every day and call that language learning. The best way we learn, actually I posted this on my Instagram, um, the best way we learn anything is by doing. So my major criticism of the grammar only school of thought is that it doesn't reflect real life, it's not real language and it's rather boring. Okay, so does that mean that I'm of the school of thought that you shouldn't learn any grammar? No, and I have one major criticism of that. The adult brain is, is not wired like that. We know that when children learn language, they are sponges, they're amazing. They're able to listen to a language that a mom, a dad, a babysitter, cousin, siblings speak, and they're able, speaks? Anyway, they're able to listen to language that is all around them, and they're able to make sense of it in their brain unconsciously. We become very good at language by the time we're about eight or nine years old. Even without schooling, the average eight or nine year old can communicate everything that they need. But the adult brain is not like that. The adult brain at around, I want to say, bet I don't know the exact age, but I want to say between the ages of eight and 12, the brain changes. You're no longer able to learn language implicitly. So you're no longer able to learn it unconsciously. Language, you can be surrounded by a language every single day, but if you don't take an active role in your learning, I would argue that you're not gonna become fluent. I can't go spend two months in India and at the end of it expect to be a C2 speaker of Hindi without taking an active role to learn Hindi. Even though we do need to have a certain amount of real-world exposure to a language, I don't think you can get by without learning the grammar. I don't think it's everything, um, but to be honest, it just seems easier if you're able to, to learn a little bit of grammar, you know? If you um, are learning French conjugation, for example, and you hear, you know, nous parlons, and vous parlez, so we speak, you all speak. Those endings might not make sense to you. Why are we saying parlant and not parler? And why aren't we saying parle? To try and learn that implicitly, unconsciously, I think would take a lot longer than if you just did a quick lesson, you know, 10 minutes and say, okay, now I know why this specific verb form is behaving in this way. So when people say no grammar at all, that's a large amount of pressure to put on yourself, you know, that you're going to be able to to um, navigate this, this world of language that is completely foreign to you, and you're just going to somehow, your brain is going to somehow pick it all apart and compartmentalize it into chunks so that you're able to use it properly. Okay, so, where does that leave us? Where am I? Am I a grammar or no grammar kind of person? Frankly, I am in the middle, but I'm closer to the, so not in the middle, because <laughs> in the middle means directly in the middle, Michael. I am closer to the learn grammar side. I believe that when you're learning a language, you should start off with grammar at the beginning. I think that having that basis makes it easier to get immersed in the language. However, I don't think you should only study grammar. I think that only studying grammar is discouraging and it's ineffective. So what I suggest is that you study grammar and you immerse yourself in the language concurrently. Um, ideally, if you can go to a different country like Russia and take a Russian course while you're living in Russia, 
so that you can learn and then use the language later when you're out at like, I don't know, the marketplace or something. I think that that is an ideal scenario. But I'm poor. <laughs> so what does that mean for a language learner like me who just can't get up and go to Russia to learn how to speak Russian? Um, that means that you need to create a program that balances those two things, grammar and real life language usage. For me, that generally means at the beginning, I do 60% grammar, so whether it's a textbook, a course, whatever, and 40% informal language learning. So maybe I watch YouTube videos, maybe I read in my target language, maybe I'm using Link like I am for Russian. So a 60-40 rule. And then I think as you get farther in your language learning journey, um, kind of to where I am in a language like Italian or French, you spend less time studying the grammar and you spend more time using the language in real contexts. I'm at a stage in French where I don't need to study the grammar anymore. I know the rules. Yes, I make mistakes. Everybody does. I make mistakes in English all the time, as you can tell by my regular speech patterns on this channel. But I've been studying French long enough that I don't need to explicitly study grammar anymore. I'm more focused on French in the real world and learning vocabulary and expanding my ability to express myself in the language. All right. Whew. So I'd really be interested in your thoughts as a viewer. Are you pro-grammar? Are you anti-grammar? Or are you somewhere in the middle like me? If you're not already following me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, definitely head over there so you can be up to date with when the live stream will be. And thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing. I, I know this video wasn't about 9,000 subscribers, but I really want to say thank you to all 9,000 of you. Thank you for continuing to support me and I will see you next time. Oh, I didn't set up any music to dance. I feel like I need to. Are you happy now? Can we all breathe easy?